The next polar function that we'd like to plot is something called the four-leaved rows, and the equation for this one is r of theta is equal to cosine of two theta. And so the idea here is that the theta is going to be sped up, or the, not the theta itself, but two theta is going twice as fast as theta. And so we want to see the effects of what this does to the graph. And once again, um, we can start by making a little table, and we can look at maybe what the first quadrant does and then um, try to interpolate from there, if possible. But obviously, whenever there's a trig function involved, um, there's periodicity and patterns we can try to notice. So just like we did for the cardioid, we can start with angle 0, theta equals 0, and think about what the radius is. So the radius is going to be r equals cosine of 2 times 0, just 0, of course. And so that's 1. So the radius uh, in, the, in the direction of the angle, the ray, theta equals 0, the radius is 1, so we get a point right here. That's the point r equals 1, theta equals 0. And then we move up. Let's actually add an angle here in between. So let's add the angle um, pi over 12. Okay. And so this angle right here, pi over 12, whoops, I still got that on. So this right here is the angle pi over 12. Let's see what happens if we plug pi over 12 into our function. So we plug in pi over 12. The radius at this point, uh, the radius at pi over 12, is going to be cosine of pi over 12 times 2. So 2 pi over 12, which is, of course, cosine of pi over 6. And that's root 3 over 2. Okay, so root 3 over 2 is a little less than 1. It's maybe about right here. All right, we don't need to get this perfect. We just want to get an idea of what the, what the curve might look like, and then again, try to interpolate from there. So let's plug in pi over 6 next. If we plug in pi over 6, then our radius is going to be cosine of 2 times pi over 6. I think we see how this works. So the angle inside of the cosine is now pi over 3. And cosine of pi over 3 is just a half. And so at this point, in the direction of pi over 6, our point is back here at, pi, at uh, just 1 half. Our radius is only 1 half. And then the next uh, angle on our polar grid here is pi over 4. So we plug this in. And when, cos when the angle is pi over 4, the cosine is actually evaluated at 2 times pi over 4. That's cosine of pi over 2. And that's, of course, 0. So remember, whenever the radius is 0, even though in our minds we're going out in the direction of the angle pi over 4, um, if the radius is 0, that means we're at the pole. Okay, and so if we try to connect these, these should kind of take a shape that looks a little bit like this. And so it should be a little bit flatter over here, almost tangent to that angle pi over 4. Okay, as we keep going, let's plug in the next angle here, which is pi over 3. So if we plug in pi over 3, then... What do we have? Our cosine of 2 times that angle, 2 pi over 3, is going to be, so cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, but cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. All right, so something interesting is happening now. So instead, we want to go out in the direction of the angle theta equals pi over 3, but we go an amount that's equal to negative 1 half. The radius is negative 1 half. So that tells us to go back through, backwards through the angle, and go out to this point. So radius of one half in the in the opposite direction. A negative just means go in the opposite direction. All right. And once we notice this, then we can see that as we go around, all these angles between pi over four and pi over two, as those get traced out, the cosine is always going to be negative, and it's going to trace out this same shape, but it's going to do it down here. Okay. And so it's going to give us kind of again the same shape, but down here. And as we continue to go around the, the uh, angles, the unit circle here, or the circle, the shape that this thing traces out is going to have eight little portions that all look very similar. And notice the, the order that I'm tracing these out in. It's all continuous, so it's traced out this much so far. That's from 0 to pi. That's what you get. 
And as you keep going around, this thing will trace back out the rest of this shape now. And again, this shape is called a four-leaved rose. It's not looking very rosy, but we can see now that we've got one, two and a half leaves in some sense. And so this one's going to get traced up to here. And just bear with me and my bad drawing comes back down and then eventually it finally closes back off this first leaf. Okay, so all these leaves should look the same. Uh, I sketched these a little quickly. They should all be the same shape in general and then there's just four of them. But this is graph right here, this is called the four leafed rows. And we will look at this moving forward. It's one of, one of my favorite examples, but it's, it's a good example. Um, so we'll see this one again.